Okay, so uh, welcome again to the class of the uh, microprocessor and microcontroller. So uh, this is chapter one, introduction to uh, microprocessor and microcontroller. So uh, this is what you will learn in this chapter. Uh, first, we will look at the overview of a processor. So what is exactly the processor? And we will look at the uh, what we call the architecture. Yeah, uh, the actually the instruction set architecture. Yeah? There are two RISC, CISC. So you may uh, heard this term before in uh, maybe in uh, computer programming. So today we will look uh, carefully and try to understand what is actually RISC and CISC uh, yeah and uh, next is uh, we will look at microprocessor system all right so uh, what uh, is the component that you need to have uh, in order to to make uh, a microprocessor system and uh, the last one will be the Microprocessor versus microcontroller. Eh? What are the differences between these two? Yeah? We have microprocessor and microcontroller. What is the difference? Okay, so the first one will be uh, processor overview. So, uh, uh, what is microprocessor actually? Eh? So, a microprocessor, eh? or in short, eh, we call it micro P. Uh, is a programmable digital electronic component that incorporates the function the function of CPU on a single semiconducting integrated circuit. This is very important uh, uh, keyword. Yeah. So, uh, it's a programmable digital electronic component. Means that programmable here means that the electronic device that we can program can program means that we can uh instruct that electronic device to do many things uh, that is means by programmable all right we can we can uh, write the job uh, the task for that device for example task number one do this task number two do this task number three do this number four and so on all right that is a program okay and uh, it must be able to do this function of CPU. Eh? Must be able to do the CPU function. What is CPU? Central Processing Unit. CPU is actually the electronic circuit that is able to do computation and logic. Eh? So actually what you have learned in last semester, in the previous semester in digital design, eh? in chapter 6 eh? and chapter 5 and 6, Actually, you have designed uh, a simple microprocessor already, a simple processor already. All right, because you have uh, ALU. ALU is the core of a microprocessor. All right, so ALU can perform arithmetic operation, uh, can perform uh, mathematics, can perform uh, add, sub, uh, multiplication, division, and also can perform the logic. Right. So that is the function of CPU, perform computation, all right? And uh, and uh, doing the data manipulation, yeah? manipulate the data, all right? You, com you can compare the data. Yeah? For example, if you, you write a program, if A less than B means that you compare two numbers. So your microprocessor should be able to compare. The, that electronic device should be able to compare the number. So that is the function of processor. All right, and uh, the last one is it is in a semiconducting IC integrated circuit. So microprocessor, the term micro means that it is small. Eh? Although we nowadays eh, the processor is actually in nano scale already, nano size, nano in size, but we still use the term micro. Eh? Micro means that small, and in the integrated circuit. All right, in the IC here. Right, that is mean by micro. Eh, processor is yes, just a processor. Eh, the 
electronic circuit that can do computation, that can do data processing. That is the processor. All right. So uh, we have many processor now. Uh, this is the big guy uh, that uh, manufacture the microprocessor. Uh, the one is here, Intel, AMD. All right. Uh, we have ARM. Yeah, ARM is not manufacturing the uh, the microprocessor. Yeah, the one that we will use in our course. It is the company uh, that design the microprocessor only. Yeah, but manufacturing is uh, is done by other other parties. Yeah? so for example, our handphone, all right, Android phone or Apple, uh, Android phone use the uh, Snapdragon. Uh, uh, microprocessor all right so uh, the arm will uh we license give the license or design uh, sell the license or design to the to samsung all right to design uh to fabricate uh, to manufacture the microprocessor or uh the iphone the apple uh, the A11 processor, for example, is is actually based on ARM architecture, so it will get the 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 uh, the processor core, eh? the processor core from ARM, and manufacture the the processor and use in the product. All right, but Intel is different. Intel is designing their own processor and uh, manufacture means that make their own processor and use as their uh, what we call the name of their processor is Intel, same as AMD. Yeah, but ARM is different. You cannot get the microprocessor that label ARM. Eh? There is no microprocessor that label ARM, but the ARM is inside other. Uh, I mean other uh, manufacturer, eh? for example, Apple, yeah, Samsung, and many more actually. All right, and we have uh, MIPS, yeah, Atmel, Microchip, Nvidia, and many more actually. All right, so this is the uh, some of the example of uh, microprocessor uh, designer and manufacturer right so uh, look at this so i get this uh quote uh, from uh, intel all right so uh, intel said that the microprocessor is one of the unsung heroes yeah why unsung hero what is unsung hero unsung hero means that the hero is that the heroes that not uh you cannot see it uh, very, uh, very, very clear or very obvious. Yeah, means that it is in the background actually, but it is important. All right, that is unsung hero. So Intel say that microprocessor is an un unsung hero yeah? of the modern era. Why? Like the car designer whose vehicle give the racing driver glory. Yeah. Uh, the Intel compare with the car designer eh? means that the car designer, uh, the car racing, right? The uh, F1. So the glory, normally we the hero is the driver, right? But people forgot to uh, to think that this uh, the powerful car is designed by the engineer or the designer that will contribute to the to the glory as well, right? So that is the microprocessor, same as microprocessor. Yeah? The microprocessor make quite incredible thing possible all over the world, all right? So because nowadays we will see, uh, we can see that every single electronic devices uh, has microcontroller or microprocessor inside, all right? This year we benefit from faster and more efficient performance which improve not just computing but also numerous field from uh, retail and industry to agriculture and vehicle safety. Eh? We can see that 
the application of microprocessor is very very wide yeah very wide almost everything nowadays use microprocessor this year in 2021 the humble microprocessor celebrate its 50th birthday yeah? 50 years already since 1971 yeah? the first microprocessor that uh, was uh, introduced yeah? in uh, 1971 it has become the brain of literally billion of devices yes billion yeah? without the microprocessor they would not be existed right this is correct so without microprocessor you will not have computer today without microprocessor you will not have internet you will, you, you will not have google meet today just imagine if we don't have computer if we have in the in the in in the pandemic uh like this yeah we cannot have the online class like this all right so that is possible because of microprocessor all right but uh less people realize this yeah that everything uh is possible because of microprocessor that why uh intel say this microprocessor is like unsung hero okay so let's look at the evolution of microprocessor a little bit right so before we can uh, start learning what we have today so we need to look, go back and look back to the history so that we can appreciate yeah, what we have today all right so uh, from uh, 1971 50 years ago all right the first microprocessor is uh, invented all right and it is used in actually in uh, in uh, this is calculator eh? all right biscom calculator all right this is uh, the microprocessor from intel and the size is uh, very small actually a 4 bit eh? a 4 bit microprocessor what is 4 bit microprocessor 4 bit microprocessor means that the data or the processing power at one time this microprocessor can only process 4 bit number so 4 bit number is pretty, pretty small right so if you look at uh, uh, unsigned number so 4 bit can represent only from number 0 to number number what number 15 right from 0 0 0 0 4 bit until 1 1 1 1 15 or f that is the number that can be represented by 4 bit number right so if you want to process uh, want to to use a bigger number so you need to do many times right for example your number the data size is uh, uh, 8 bit or more than 15 so you need to have or do the calculation two times right to get to do that if you take for uh sign number so the size will be even smaller it will be from minus eight to positive seven the range yeah for sign number four bit sign number so it is quite small yeah quite small and this is used in the first calculator electronic calculator in 1971 50 years ago and uh, very fast in 1977 uh, looks like a first uh, all-in-one computer where we, we have a monitor we have the keyboard we have the processor inside all right uh, looks like the first pc is uh, emerged huh? in 1977 and uh, the year later, the first washing machine that used the microcontroller, eh, microprocessor that is embedded inside, eh, is was introduced eh, in 1978. Right, means that the microprocessor or the washing machine is controlled by microchip, eh, microprocessor. And uh, this is this is 70s, this is 80s. In 1980. 
all right we have the arcade money all right have you ever seen this all right this is a uh, very popular in uh, 90, 1980s to 1990s. Eh? Right. So uh, kids, uh, those days, will play game using uh, this. Eh? this. And uh, in uh, 1981, the first laptop uh, was introduced. And you see that the screen is very small, 5 inch only. All right, and you see the weight, 10.7 kg. Eh? This is even uh, bigger than your PC, right? 10.7 kg, All right? And uh, so called, this is so called a uh, grandfather of modern laptop, yeah. And uh, 1986, so we have Nintendo. And yes, this is game console. All right, the first game console uh, was introduced in uh, 1980s, uh, 86. Right, so uh, so the the Xbox, the PS, uh, PlayStation that we have today is actually based on this. Yeah, you have the console like this, and you have the controller, the gamepad, yeah, the joystick, and uh, uh, see, play the uh, what is this Mario. Right. Hmm. And uh, the first PC, right, is was introduced in 1991. It looks like this, eh? And uh, even my first computer is look like this, yeah, in 1994, 93. Uh, and uh, the outlook of the computer uh, like this is uh, from what from 1991 to even uh, uh, 20s uh, to 20 yeah 10 years right so the PC looks like this uh, look like this have you ever seen this one all right maybe in the museum right so this is the first computer and uh, my first computer was in uh, 1993, right? And uh, you know what is the specification? Uh, RAM is 4 Mac only at that time, which is powerful enough. You know? All right, and the cost for for the computer is, you guess, how much? Uh, it is not even Pentium computer, uh, which is the Intel, uh, if I can remember, it's uh, Intel 486. Uh, for, uh, the name is Intel 486, uh, and the frequency is 33 megahertz. Uh, and the cost for that computer is uh, uh, 5K. Uh, when you want to upgrade RAM for, RAM for one megabyte, the cost is 100 ringgit. All right. Uh, you can imagine that, and the hard disk is only 100 megabyte. Yeah, megabyte running on uh, Microsoft DOS and Windows 3.1 at that time. Eh? Okay, so and the next, yeah, 1997. So we have uh, embedded processor uh, in the MP3 player. Eh? MP3 player was introduced in 1997 and nowadays we even don't have this already because everything is in our phone right but before that to listen to music we use uh, before that we use uh, the the what the recording the tape eh? the magnetic tape right not even in digital like this eh? so the digital music eh, mp3 was introduced back in uh, 1997 all right and uh, the first smartphone actually uh, not from uh, apple or android yeah the first smartphone was introduced by this blackberry yeah in 1999 all right 22 years ago right and the uh, screen you see not even the 
the graphical screen. Eh? This is a simple LCD screen. All right, but this is a smartphone actually. The first smartphone, you see the full keyboard here. All right. And uh, in uh, the year of uh, new century, yeah, 20, 20, 21st century, uh, we have iPod introduced by Apple uh, before iPhone. Uh, we, Apple introduced iPod yeah, to listen to music. So this will kill this. Yeah. So become famous after that. And the first tablet yeah, was introduced actually by Windows, Microsoft, yeah, Microsoft Windows, the first tablet. And uh, back then, it was used by uh, business yeah, only yeah, because it is quite ex expensive, right? And people uh, normally use uh, PC, yeah, not, not the tablet yet. Yeah? So that's why the tablet, uh, Microsoft tablet, Microsoft Windows tablet is not very successful. Yeah? And in 2008, yeah, uh, we have what we call the netbook. Right? Netbook is uh, actually just like laptop, but this is a very small version. And this is not very successful also because uh, uh, at the same time, we have uh, tablet yeah, from Android and Apple iPad yeah, so people uh, uh, look or prefer that technology yeah, rather than this one this one I uh, I have also yeah, back in 2009 I think uh, from Asus yeah, from Asus netbook now very small laptop right and yes 2010 Apple introduced this eh, iPad, right, and uh, which is very popular until today, All right. 2011, uh, Intel introduced what we call the Ultrabook. Eh? Ultrabook is a uh, is a notebook, uh, laptop also, but with uh, very uh, specific or very high end, eh? very high end uh, laptop. All right, that you need to meet certain specification eh, to 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 be called uh, an ultrabook. Eh? For example, you need to have Intel uh, i core processor. Uh, you need to have SSD eh? in this, and uh, should be uh, very very thin, eh? less than uh, 0 0.8 inch. Eh? The, uh, the size, eh? the the thin. Uh, and this is, must be high performance, eh? All right? Ultrabook. And uh, we can see uh, digital signage also everywhere uh, in supermarket, in uh, on the road also. All right, the side road. Eh? We have this uh, emerged in uh, 2012. So all of these things we need microprocessor eh? inside. All right, and uh, this uh, before that. The source for this thing also I get from Intel, yeah, Intel website, All right? Uh, and this one from uh, this year to we don't know. All right. Now we have AI, yeah, AI, and uh, to drive AI is actually the microprocessor also. If you don't have microprocessor, there will be no AI. All right. So AI is the machine eh, that can learn by itself. Eh? We can train the machine to to learn. All right. And again, that can be uh, possible if we have a powerful microprocessor. Okay. All right, so that is the history of microprocessor. So now we will look at the architecture, all right, which is uh, pretty uh, fundamental. Eh? The architecture is, uh, we can say that it is the same from the beginning until today, eh? 50 years ago. The basic architecture is actually the same. Eh? means that when you learn architecture, 
the architecture today and the uh, the first microprocessor is actually the principle is pretty the same the only difference is the complexity all right so uh, we have many features uh, in today's microprocessor as compared to the previous one right so uh, when we are uh, when we talk about the architecture this is the uh, instruction set architecture actually right so what is instruction set architecture or isa eh? in short if you uh, see this term uh, somewhere isa isa is actually uh, instruction set architecture what is instruction set architecture so we need to look back to the to the software uh, no to the hardware and what we have learned uh, before this uh, in uh, data design for example so let's look at uh, maybe this uh, maybe we can have a little bit revision uh, to understand what is ISA can you see the screen here I want to draw something here to explain to you what is ISA so maybe we can we need to look back uh, what we have learned in the, the design right so in the previous semester when we learned the, the design we design we actually have designed a simple uh, processor uh, so what we need in a processor so the first thing we need is the of course the ALU let's say this is our ALU and we need a set of uh, register so maybe uh, in this example we have two register register uh, A and register B and we have this ALU We have the connection like this. Uh, and we have the connection back to the input to the register like this. And we have the control to select the operation of the LU. Maybe this one is 3 bit. All right. So we have. Uh, up to how many operation if we have three bit alu so we can have up to eight operation right operation zero 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 operation zero zero one operation until operation one 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 so operation zero 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 maybe we can have that for addition zero zero one for subtraction and so on and so forth all right and uh, we have uh, this is to load value from this bus to the uh, register A so let's name this LA and this one is LB right so this is actually a simple processor where we can process a data right based on uh, the function of this ALU so Uh, for example, if you want to have uh, how many operations, eight operation for this, yeah, add, sub, and so on. So um, we need a controller, right, to sequence the operation. So you need the, the CU. So this is the, the data path. This is the CU. So the CU will generate the uh, control signals to this to add for example add a and b and store at b for example we want to do this operation we want to do a uh, a plus b 
And let's, for example, uh, the A plus B is uh, the operation 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all right? So the control signal is LA1 must be, must be 1 in order to load the data to, to A. So this is LA, this is LB, and the operation of the LU is KLU. Oh, no, no. Name this at OP, and this is 3 bit OP. Right. Okay. So this will be the control signal and uh, to generate the control signal we have the input all right which is the the binary number as well all right so for example in our design the isa instruction set architecture is uh, 8 bit the size is 8 bit all right so uh, okay so the code for to do this is yeah operation at is maybe uh, 0 0 0 0 the first 4 bit and uh, A and B, uh, A, 0, 1, B is 1, 0. Now, this is just an example, yeah? All right, so this is the code that we fit to the CU. And when CU get this input, it will... Yeah, when the CU get this input, it will generate the control signal to do this, to do this. And when we get give the different another data, yeah, another code here to the CU. For example, zero 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 one zero one one zero. All right. So this is the code for sub. Eh? So what we want to do, A, A minus B, right? When we send this to the CU, and the CU will generate the control signal eh? to, the, to this, to do this, all right? So this is actually instruction eh? or program. All right, for our microprocessor. And this is called ISA, Instruction Set Architecture. All right, do you get the idea? Yeah, this is the form of program or instruction. See, if this code, it will do this. This code, it will do this. And if we get, give another code, it will do other things. All right, based on our design of the CU, and of course, the, the data path, right? So this is actually what we call the instruction. That we use to instruct the microprocessor to do the task. Eh? Task number one, task number two, task number three, and so on, or program, all right? Later, in this course, we will not design the microprocessor. We will use the processor, all right? The ARM microprocessor, that is very popular in the market. But we want to write the code, eh? the instruction for that microprocessor. Means that to instruct the microprocessor to do what task we want to, we want the microprocessor to do. All right, so that is instruction. And of course, we not, 
writing the instruction in the code like this. This is called a machine code, yeah, or machine language. This is machine language, all right. So we will not use using machine language because this is it is very difficult, yeah, because you see the code is binary, which is very uh, very difficult for us human to interpret this. We need to open the manual. What is mean by zero zero zero? Uh, is it add or is it sub? All right, and what is this? Uh, so this is very very hard. All right, so we will use a, a platform, right, where we can write a language that is more to human language. Uh, the first one is called the assembly language. Where the language is like this. When we want to add A and B, so the language is looks something like this. Instead of writing in code like this, yeah. So we write using human language. A D D A B. All right, something like this. Okay, you get the idea. Or to do the sub, we will write the language like this, and we will use the computer to translate this into the the machine code such that the microprocessor can understand our program because microprocessor does not understand this the microprocessor understand this eh, machine language this is human language actually all right and this one is called a low level language or assembly language yeah all right so we will use a, a software, a program in our computer to translate this language, assembly language or low-level language to the machine code. All right. Why is this called a low-level language? Because this is actually near to the hardware, eh? directly converted to the hardware. All right. And we have another kind of programming language. We call it high-level language. And yeah, number two. We have high level language. So this is for example the C language, C, Java, Python, and many more. Yeah, we have many, many modern uh, MATLAB, for example. All right? Many modern uh, languages for high level language. And assembly language also we have many types eh? depend on what microprocessor that we use all right for example intel has their own assembly language and it is unique to uh, uh, the microprocessor eh? the arm has a unique assembly language the uh, amd and intel is pretty the same actually eh? because the architecture is uh, is is, is uh, based on x we call it x86 architecture yeah and uh, many others so what the uh, again when we write our program using this high level language all right so we need to write this in uh, on the computer all right use our computer and the computer need to compile what we call compile when you press the compile button actually what the computer do is to translate this to the machine machine code or machine language such that the computer will understand understand the program the instruction all right and this is the instruction set architecture eh? means that the size of your instruction set eh? instruction eh? 
how it is coded all right is called the instruction set architecture get the idea so that is the relation between uh, what we have learned in last in the previous semester and this course all right okay hope you clear on that so we go back again to this so i explained to you already what is isa right which is the uh, the architecture of the instruction set instruction that is used to instruct eh, the microprocessor right and it is in the form of binary actually okay so there are two types uh, we have cisc which is the complex instruction set computer yeah the name is complex means that literally it is a complex right and the, the second one is reduced instruction set computer right so that is the name but what is this eh? what is this two what are these two look at this uh, this is the just the uh, explanation to the previous one i have explained already yeah isa is a medium whereby a processor communicate with the human a programmer yes although there are several other former uh, formally identified layer in between processor and programmer just like i said uh, when we look back to to this this is a communication between programmer yes we are programmer we write a program like this or like this and use the computer to translate to the machine code so that our microprocessor can understand the, the code and what is the instruction the program and uh, also uh, we can see that there are many layers eh, between processor and programmer yes of course and we uh, if we look at this there are many layers eh? uh, for example uh, here this is not directly uh, mm, we are not directly programmed the microprocessor using this language but we need a, a, a compiler uh, to translate this into this uh, so that is the the layer in between uh, the programmer and the and the microprocessor uh, okay so this is uh, what i uh, explain already instruction is a command given to the processor to perform an action eh? to perform an action or to do tasks eh? based on the the program task number one task number two and number three and so on an instruction set is an entire collection of instruction for a given processor uh, this is very important instruction set is the entire collection of instruction so look at this so this is one instruction this is two instruction instruction number two we have more instruction so the set eh, all the collection all the instruction is the set of instruction that we can use to to program our microprocessor all right so that is called instruction set and the term architecture imply a particular way of building the system that make the processor yes so uh, uh, although the processor the concept is uh, is pretty the same but uh, the detail is different eh? for example intel and arm all right the architecture is is quite different okay and of course if the architecture is different the instruction set is also different right so look at this what are the differences between cisc and rissc uh, so cisc is actually the first instruction set eh, to be introduced eh? uh, was introduced in, uh, in in the first microprocessor original microprocessor is the IS, uh, cisc actually so you can uh, say that the first microprocessor 50 years ago is actually CISC and RISC is the new one actually the redesigned ISA that emerged in the early 80s eh? uh, about 10 years after the first microprocessor 
RSE was introduced. Yeah? Why is this introduced? Because the advantages that we will see later on. Right? So when we look at the uh, instruction, oops, sorry, instruction uh, cycle eh? or the time to complete one instruction. All right. So for example, if we go back to this, if we go back to this, so means that to do the add, for example, to do this instruction, so how many clock cycle we need to have? All right. How many clock cycle? So normally, uh, if you look at how the microprocessor uh, execute the instruction, eh, is uh, like this. Eh? When we took the when we take the the the, the simple uh, instruction cycle, so we will have for one instruction. Eh, we will have about four uh, operation. The first one is called uh, fetch. Eh? You will learn this in detail in uh, computer architecture, but I will introduce to you in this course also to understand uh, the course better. Uh, number two is decode. Number three is execute. Number four is um, maybe write right back eh, to the memory. What is fetch actually? So uh, if we look at the uh, general structure or general architecture of most of the microprocessor, we can see that our microprocessor is uh, actually not uh, simple like this. Eh? It is more complicated where you will have uh, many, many, many more register and you will have the part of the memory as well. All right, so it looks something like this. Yeah, you have the ALU. And you will have the memory part. You draw the memory uh, in like a box like this. And uh, so, of course, the memory you will have many many location all right and this is for example address number zero this is address number one number zero number one number two number three and so on until uh, the last location maybe a uh, ff all right in hexadecimal and you will have the Register, we call it register bank. Right. Uh, let's say we have to register only simplified version. The same thing. We have A, B. And we will have the, what we call the instruction decoder. Uh, instruction register, IR. Right, and we will have the control unit, or most of the time we call it instruction decoder, no? or control unit in our case. All right, so uh, the memory and the register will be connected through the data bus. Yeah. Right. So this is maybe we have the another register, the output register, and this one is connected back to the memory for the write operation. Okay, another register C, and this one is connected back to the memory. All right. And to access the memory, we have another, uh, this is the, we call data bus. 
this is also data bus right and we also we can use the, this bus connect to the instruction register and instruction register connected to the decoder or the controller and the controller will generate the control signal right and to access the memory location we have what we call the address bus eh? uh, the size is depend uh, let's say uh, this address bus is 10 bit so it's connected to the memory as well address bus so this is a simplified uh, microprocessor architecture right something looks like this eh? so we have the memory we have the register we have the ALU we have the instruction register uh, instruction register here decoder here so normally the program yeah the code that we test this yeah right so let's for example is this is 8 bit the code will be stored yeah in the memory all right so uh, this is zero 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 what is zero one one zero zero one one zero so the second one is the second instruction zero one one zero and uh, and so on all right and the data also somewhere in the memory so in your memory you can save your program and also the the data right so what the computer do uh, in order to execute one instruction is this right so first thing the microprocessor will do is to fetch uh, the instruction or to get the instruction from the memory that we call fetch right so the instruction will be uh, we will get the instruction from here all right from the memory and we put in the instruction register all right that is the first operation we get the instruction put in the instruction re register the next is we decode all right to let the microprocessor understand what is the instruction all right what the instruction is so this one oh the microprocessor know that this is to add a b and then uh, put it back to to a or to c or whatever right so when decode after decode so the operation the control signal will be generated all right and the operation will be performed and that we call execute all right and the last operation is write means that we write the data maybe back to the memory or to the register uh, it depend on uh, what how we design our microprocessor and the last operation is to to write all right so that will be uh, the operation for the microprocessor uh, to do in order to uh, perform or execute one instruction eh? fetch decode execute and write this is the basic one so for complicated microprocessor you may have more operation all right so back to this Instruction can take several clock cycle. All right, means that uh, for CISC, it may take more clock cycle in order to to complete one instruction, but RISC take less clock cycle. All right, 
The next, the number of clock cycle to execute each instruction can vary. In other words, complex and variable length instruction. This is related to this also. All right, so it takes several clock cycle and uh, it can vary eh, in one instruction to the next to the other instruction. For example, uh, instruction for add takes five clock cycle or four clock cycle. Instruction for multiply may take 10 clock cycle for CISC. All right, but for RISC, normally. Uh, the number of clock cycle for each instruction is the same. Okay? For example, instruction add and instruction sub use four clock cycle. Instruction multiply also use four clock cycle. Instruction two uh, for logic also use four clock cycle. But for CISC, may be different. For logic, may be more simple, only take two clock cycle. For other complex instruction like division, multiplication may take more clock cycle. That is the meaning of this. Yeah? Right? The next one is this. In terms of hardware, the complexity of the hardware. Yeah? So CISC is known as hardware centric design, but RISC is software centric design what does this mean all right so the meaning is this again we need to go back to the basic concept that we have learned actually uh, if we look at microprocessor design eh, and when, when we compare between uh, cisc and RISC okay so when we look at these two architecture CISC and RISC uh, the complex instruction set instruction, uh, instruction set computer may have uh, a comprehensive instruction like for example, uh, we have the multiply instruction, but some of the RISC microprocessor, we don't have multiplication instruction. We don't have, we just don't have. All right. So how to do multiplication in RISC computer? Or processor if you don't have multipli multiplication instruction so in CISC to do multiplication we can just write MUL for example register A to register B all right but for RISC microprocessor you may not have the multiply instruction. So you cannot use this instruction. All right. So to do multiplication, what you need to do is to, to add many times. All right. So for example, A is equal to 5, B is equal to 3. So in RISC computer, to do A multiply B, what you need to do is you need to have 5 plus 5 plus 5, 3 times. Then you can get the same result as CISA, which is 15. Right? So, what is uh, why this thing affect the hardware complexity? This is mean that in CISC, 
you have multiplier, right? You have multiplier. But in RISC, you don't have multiplier. That's why you don't have That's why you don't have multiplication instruction. Or maybe you have multiplication instruction in this RISC computer, but actually what the microprocessor do is use the adder to do the, the, the add in the background. Same thing. But the point is this RISC don't have multiplier eh, inside. So if you don't have multiplier inside, means that your circuit is less complex as compared to the CISC that you have multiplier. Correct? So that is the meaning of this. Hardware-centric design. Huh? Or the hardware is more complex. This one is software centric design. Yeah? Means that the compiler need to be powerful eh, to convert your, your instruction to, to the meaningful uh, uh, operation. All right? So for example, if your microprocessor have eh, actually have uh, the multiplication multiplication uh, instruction, but it's actually do do this at four times uh three times like this yeah? so the uh the compiler must be very very clever eh? very clever to translate this to this yeah? but this one okay you have the hardware so no problem this is directly translated to the to uh to to the instruction to the to multiply the number right very straightforward uh, the isa does not much as possible using hardware secretary hence complicated and expensive hardware right so again just like i said normally cisc is more complicated and more expensive eh, as compared to rsc microprocessor all right because of the complexity yeah Hmm. Next is large number of instructions, small number of instructions. So this is uh, again related to the previous example. So uh, in the CISC, you may have all or uh, all the necessary instruction, right? But in RISC, you may not have all the instruction. For example, you don't have multiplication instruction. In some of the IRC, but the at one IRC, you are IRC, SC, you may have already, but but still the number of instruction is limited and eh? the size of instruction is limited. For example, CISC, you may have up to 1000 instruction, yeah, but IRC, RISC, less than 100 instruction is enough already, right? So we focus on writing the program, eh? not the, the hardware, right? Compound addressing mode. Yeah. What is addressing mode? Addressing mode is the way we access the data in the memory, actually. All right. So last time we uh, we learned in the, the design yeah, in writing the uh, uh, the RTL code. Yeah. For example, when we do this, Right, so this is RTL code or RTL notation. So we plus the content of R1, uh, add to the content of R2, and we save the result in R1. So this in computer or microprocessor, normally we call direct addressing. Direct addressing mode. Or direct or register direct addressing mode. But if we do this,
right? remember this is memory accessing the memory means that we receive the data eh, from uh, the memory location 100h eh, and send to r1 so this we call memory direct addressing And we also have something like this. All right. Where we have R2 inside the bracket. All right. Last time we learned already. So this is actually the data is indirectly, uh, the look indirectly pointed by the content of R2. Right? And the data is actually located in the memory all right so for example our r2 is 200h eh? so actually we will get the data from location 200 to r1 so this we call memory indirect addressing And all of this we call it addressing mode yeah, in microprocessor. So uh, in CISC, normally we have many addressing mode. So we can have indirect addressing, we can have uh, in indirect addressing with relative later on we will see, yeah, and many more. But in RISC, we may have only these two addressing mode where we can uh, access directly the register or directly access the memory but indirect like this we don't have yeah we don't have because to do this you need a more complicated circuit or hardware all right so in RISC we don't have that All right so this also contribute to the smaller uh, design eh? or smaller circuit in uh, RISC so we can see that uh, we can see that RISC is less complicated eh? in terms of uh, design in terms of uh, circuit so the advantage of less uh, complexity is what The advantage is the the power consumption when your circuit is small the power consumption is also small right think about this so your microprocessor is uh, based on or used to manipulate digital digital uh, data zero and one all right binary so to realize zero and one in hardware what we use is transistor right so your microprocessor is actually built by many 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 transistor eh, to realize zero and one zero one right so if one transistor consume let's say for example one uh, microwatt already right one microwatt if you have one thousand 1000 uh, transistor so what is the power consumption all right so 1 microwatt multiply by 1000 so you have 1 milli what already see so if you have 1 million transistor you have 1 watt already all right so so if your microprocessor is small less complexity means that less transistor less transistor means less power consumption that is why you see that in your mobile phone uh, is using ARM architecture and ARM architecture is from CI, uh, RISC, uh, reduced set, reduced instruction set computer. Uh, and ARM is at once reduced instruction set computer actually. Uh, ARM that we will use in this course is RISC.
and RIC is used a lot in in mobile devices eh? because the advantage is less power consumption as compared to your your PC your PC use Intel microprocessor and Intel microprocessor is CISC CISC is using or made up of very complex eh? more complex circuit yeah as compared to RIC and that's why it is consume more power all right consume more power that's is why it is used in uh, bigger uh, computer such as your laptop uh, and your PC all right okay any question regarding RISC and uh, CISC before we go to the next No, doctor. Okay, doctor. Yeah. So to understand this, you need to understand the ISA first. So this is actually uh, related to the ISA. Uh, everything here is related to the ISA. Okay. So uh, this is actually the same same things we have discussed. Okay, CISC. So we see that uh, greater complexity, eh, processor, but uh, RISC is greater complexity is uh, at the compiler part yeah? right because uh, again when we look at uh, we need to have the compiler that able to do this for example the microprocessor don't have multiplier all right the microprocessor don't have multiplier the RISC microprocessor for example so we can write the program using C programming for example right we can write uh, equation like uh, C equal to A multiply B we can write like this and we can still program the RISC microprocessor that don't have the multiplier what the uh, compiler do is that it will convert this to actually A plus A uh, Uh, based on what is B, right? So if B is five, so it will plus A five times, all right? So that is the job of the compiler, all right? But this one, the compiler is easy because you have multiplier, so it is translated to 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 the multiplication process, all right? So that is why we say that RISC the complexity is more at the compiler, eh? not the processor processor is uh, less complex eh? less complex as compared to to the CISC one okay more on our RISC philosophy so we will look at the uh, more on RISC eh, in our course because we use a R, uh, ARM microprocessor and this is actually the uh, processor uh, of the future eh? Uh, instruction RISC processor have a reduced number of instruction classes so we know this already these classes provide simple operation that can uh, execute in single cycle the compiler or programmer synthesize complicated operation for example a divide operation okay uh, instruction cycle eh? again let me go back to this this is called instruction cycle right one instruction oh, sorry this is called instruction cycle all right so instruction in order to complete one instruction so this is the cycle so this may take uh, for example four clock cycle one clock cycle for fetch one clock cycle for decode one clock cycle for execute and one clock cycle for write Eh? and this four clock cycle become one what we call the instruction cycle all right and uh, pipeliners so you will learn pipeline in detail in uh, computer architecture 
but this is uh, you need to know also here uh, what is pipeline actually pipeline means that you can uh, actually overlap the instruction eh? so to speed up the uh, speed of execution uh, instruction execution you can actually overlap the uh, instruction just like a pipeline if you have more pipeline right for your water supply so if you have more pipeline means that you can dis uh, distribute the water uh, more water at the same time right same as in computer if you can run instruction more instruction uh, at one time as compared to run in sequence so that will be faster right so for example if we go back to this concept again if we have for example this is a clock eh, the clock that fit to your microprocessor and uh, let's see that the first clock cycle here the first clock cycle here is for the fetch operation and the second operation is for the decode the third operation is to execute and the last operation is to to write all right so one this is one instruction cycle okay your microprocessor need four clock cycle this is clock four clock cycle in order to complete one instruction cycle so to execute the next instruction no so you can do something like this and you need to wait for the for the next instruction to be completed and you continue with the with the new cycle this is instruction number 1 this is instruction number 2 and so on all right this is uh, the design without pipeline all right means that the instruction is run is executed in sequence all right first instruction followed by the next followed by the next and the next all right so in the pipeline design eh, in pipeline computer design what we do is something like this instead of uh, instead of running in sequence like this we don't want to do that but we overlap the instruction like this means that this is the first instruction second instruction and if you have the third instruction like this all right because why because you can see that this is fetch all right so the next cycle the fetch process is free already actually so you can do the fetch for the next instruction already for the second clock because the second clock this one is free already all right so you can do the fetch and when you decode 
here, yeah, when you decode the first instruction, actually you can fetch the second instruction already. And when you execute the, the first instruction, you can decode the, the next instruction already and so on. So when you overlap like this, it will execute more faster as compared to executing in sequence like before. So this is called pipeline design. Yeah? Pipeline design. So in RISC, normally apply the pipeline design. All right. So this is the uh, explanation to, to this. Yeah. Uh, register. So we know that already what is what are registers uh, in uh, digital design. We use register a lot, right? So normally RISC microprocessor, yeah, have a large number of general purpose register set. Uh, means that not only register A and B, we will see later. Normally uh, RISC computer or processor have more than 10 register set. For example, the ARM that we will use is uh, we have uh, 16 general purpose register. Yeah, general purpose register. As compared to CISC, normally CISC has a smaller number of general purpose register. All right, so very easy. And uh, the last one is uh, unique to RISC also, yeah? as compared to CISC. We call it the load store architecture. What is load store architecture? Load store architecture is this. We need to go back to, to the architecture. Uh, are this. This one. Back to this one. Load store architecture means that in RISC, when the data is in the memory, for example, this is our data, yeah, in hexadecimal, I write in hexadecimal, I, for example, this one is AB. Uh, hang on. This, this color. Oops. AB and uh, 8 bit, yeah, this is hexadecimal, 8 bit. And uh, this is CD, okay, ABCD. So for example, our data is in uh, the memory. Now we want to add this to data or process or do whatever you want, right? For example, we want to add AB plus CD. AB plus CD, all right? So in RISC computer, what you need to do is you need to load this data into the register first. Means that here, AB, you need to load into the register. All right. Means that you have you will have the instruction to load the data from the memory to the register. And then you need to add. Eh? First step is Load. Second is add or any operation that you want. And then you get the result in C. All right. And then you need to store back into the memory the result. Install. Right, so you need three operation or three instruction for RISC. But for CISC, right, you will have an instruction that you can do something like this. Memory, uh, for example, this is location number uh, number ten. You can do memory number ten. This is number three, number four, right? You add three, 
in one single instruction without the need to load to this register means that you have extra circuit that can get the data from this go to the lu and straight away back to the to the memory all right without the need to load and store that is cisc and risc you need load and store so this is called load store architecture and all the risc uh, computer or microprocessor use load store architecture means that whenever you want to do the operation on the data on the memory you need to load the data to the to the register temporary register here before you can do the operation to the data and you need to save back or store back to the to the memory all right but in cisc computer you have a, an instruction to do this eh, without the need to load to the register that's why the register for risc is need to be more than cisc because you need to put the data in the register and then do the do the do the operation and save the data in the register before you load back to the memory right but cisc you can operate the data directly from the memory all right and uh, that is why also the cisc is less complicated yeah the circuitry is less compli complicated as compared to cisc because the circuit is like this but here you see cisc when you want to add the data directly from the memory you need the connection from from the memory to the to the alu right and of course the controller is it's much much complicated as compared to the risc all right so that summarizes the the uh, story of RISC, right? So that is why we say that RISC is more compli uh, less complicated as compared to CISC. Okay. So, uh, any one of you have a class after this? Yes, yes sir. Oh, you have class. So if you have class, so we will stop our class here and uh, yeah, we cannot uh, finish the class today, but uh, I think it is important for you to understand uh, uh, the uh, this, uh, the ISA, the CISC, RISC, what is the, what are the differences between the two and why, why is this different? When I say this is less not not just uh, read the notes eh? when we say that this one is less complicated why is this less complicated so it less complicated because of actually you need to go to the to the architecture how the thing is implemented in the hardware then you will realize eh? why we say that it is less complicated or more complicated why is this uh, uh, less power consumption why is this more power consumption in CISC and so on? All right. So I think that one is very important for you. Uh, so if we, uh, if you have a class, so maybe we can uh, we will stop our we end our class session here and we will continue uh, the class next next week and try to finish this chapter. And uh, we also will have. Uh, uh, some of the uh, tutorial here exercise uh, that uh, please try to answer this and we will discuss uh, next week all right